Hi everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about the INFJ's fear of weakness. Now, INFJs, they are typically some of the most empathetic and considerate of all personality types. And because of this reason, perhaps INFJs are often quick to say, don't misunderstand my kindness as a weakness. I think there is a reason why INFJs feel the need to say this, and I think it stems from that feeling, that insecurity that I am weaker than other people. What if I am less strong than other people? What if I'm not strong enough to deal with the realities of life? What if I'm not able to handle the challenges and struggles that are ahead of me? What if I will break? What if I will fall apart? What if I won't be able to manage what is ahead of me or what is to come? INFJs are people that struggle more with feelings of powerlessness than other personality types and that is why INFJs can sometimes be quitters, people that give up before something even starts, people that choke under pressure, people that uh, uh, give up before it's even gotten to the starting point. Often INFJs, they, uh, because they feel they are not strong enough to handle things. They might uh, limit themselves from going into relationships, from taking on a new job or employment or a promotion. Uh, and it's that, but what if I say yes and then I can't handle it and then I break and then I fall apart and I can't deal with the situation? What if something comes up in a relationship and I'm not going to be strong enough? I am not going to be strong enough. That can become a, like a... <laughs> Uh, self-destructive prophecy of I am not gonna be strong enough it's not gonna happen I'm gonna be broken I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be too weak to deal with it I'm gonna uh, fa fail at it and it's better not to try because I know I will not make it and so as an INFJ what you need to work on is managing that fear and uh, dealing with that struggle in yourself a lot of the time what you have to recognize is I am not being accurate in my own estimation of my strength and I am a lot stronger than what I think I am. So INFJs constantly underestimate their power and that means they will avoid situations that they would have been strong enough to manage. INFJs avoid situations or conflicts, fear conflicts even, even though they would have been emotionally strong enough to manage that situation. They would have been able to deal with it. They wouldn't have had a problem. They would have been able to stand up to that person and have that conversation. So what you need to do then as an INFJ is walk through yourself with those situations and always expect a little bit more from yourself than what you think you can give. Learn to expect that you have more power than what you think you have inside yourself. INFJs are people that tend to overestimate their empathy and the heroic potential of their empathy. And that means INFJs assume that if they are empathetic enough, if they show enough understanding, they will be able to deal with and overcome and compensate for their feelings of weakness. Oh, I am not... Uh, ready to face that conflict or I think that's going to be too hard for me. So what I can do is I can talk to that person and use an empathetic response and I can try to show consideration to their needs and their issues and I can hope that they will do the same to me. A lot of time INHAs assume that other people have the same ability as you to decode human behavior and to read human intentions and to adjust your behavior to match other people's needs and values. What that means INFJs assume other people can do what they do and all what they do all the time, even though other people don't actually do this as often as you do and not as readily as you do. A lot of personality types would find it strange to the even consider the thought of adjusting your behavior based on hypothetically offending or hurting another person's feelings. And a lot of people would say, yeah, I'm not going to do anything unless you bring it up to me. So as an INFJ, it can be surprising to realize that I need to have difficult conversations with other people. And this just goes to relationships. If you also talk about it at work, 
the problem becomes even bigger. As an INFJ, you are going to have to stand up for yourself in a corporate environment because people are looking out for themselves and their own salaries and their own position at work. And so should you. You should not be... Um, letting other people get ahead of you and you should not be saying no to things because you don't think you're good enough for it because you are not being 100% objective about your abilities. It might actually be that you are better suited for this position than anybody else. And now you're going to give that situation up. You're going to give up this position to somebody who is less strong or less capable than you in this role. But just because you wouldn't be objective and thinking about your strengths and that's what I'm asking you to do be objective as well in understanding what you can do and make a list of your skills and talents write down for yourself what is it I can do what is it I struggle with the final advice I want to leave you with is develop your strength and your skills and spend time learning to become better at something if you feel you're not good enough for a role or for a promotion or for a career you were dreaming of then go out and get the skills for it. Go out and talk to people who, are, who do it and emulate their strengths and their behavior and see and learn from them because you can become strong and strength is something is not something inherent that is static inside a person. It is something that we develop and can improve in ourselves. Just as other types can learn empathy from you, you can learn strength or you can learn action or you can learn authenticity from other personality types and that's what I want to leave you all with today my new mission in personality psychology is using personality psychology to broaden awareness and expand empathy and understanding and to help people educate themselves on the different personality types as a method to improving on ourselves learning from other personality types and learning from ourselves and learning from successful people from our personality type how we can be better at being ourselves okay so that's it for today if you like this video or if you have any thoughts leave them in the comments down below thanks for watching and do remember you can always become a patreon at patreon.com slash for more content and more articles and more podcasts where we investigate all these cool ideas about personality psychology